Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Thank you for joining me for some late afternoon tea. This week's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna dive into the Save the Children hashtag and I'm gonna give you some real tangible ways that you can help the cause locally. But of course, before we dive too deep into anything, let me show off what I'm munching on this week. So I got inspired by all the coffee shops unleashing their fall drinks and made these gluten-free pumpkin cake donuts. Some of them even have cream cheese frosting because I am out of control. And today I'm drinking Flying Rhino coffee because it's some of my favorite and honestly, it never fails to soothe the soul. But enough of all of this nonsense, let's just get into it. So if you've been on social media at all over the last month, your timeline's probably been flooded with posts using the hashtag Save the Children. And it hasn't just been online. Marches and other demonstrations have broken out across the country using that same mantra. The idea is to draw attention to the major issue of child sex trafficking, which of course is a cause any decent human can get behind. But the problem here is when you click on that hashtag, you'll see a ton of theories about celebrities and sometimes the hashtags being shared with straight up misinformation. And experts like Celia Williamson, the director of the Human Trafficking and Social Justice Institute at the University of Toledo say, a lot of these posts mischaracterize what human trafficking really looks like. There's a lot of myths flying around and a lot of sensationalized stories and a lot of things that are just scaring the community and just really aren't commonplace anyway. It's not really about snatching and grabbing people off the street. And I mean, that does happen, but those are the stories that make it to CNN. Those are the stories that make it to Hollywood, you know, but <clears throat> the more common experience is this overtime manipulation. But what's the big deal if these stories are being sensationalized? If it's bringing awareness to the cause, doesn't the end justify the means? Well, Celia says that spreading misinformation about human trafficking can actually cause more problems for the people who are most at risk. What happens when those myths get out there is that the people that have the money, the power, the resources, the influence, hear these stories about snatching and grabbing people from Kroger's in the suburbs or something. And then they start moving, making moves to bring resources to communities that already have a lot of protective factors. And when you have limited resources, you move them away from kids who are the most vulnerable. So not only is it, it's not like a do no harm, it's like you're actually doing harm. Okay then, so let's get educated. If human trafficking doesn't really look like the movie Taken, then what does it actually look like? Celia explains that it's a lot more complicated than just abduction, and often it involves the manipulation of kids who are already struggling. More commonly, uh, vulnerable kids are involved, and traffickers look very safe and they meet kids in very safe looking places, not in seedy, creepy back alleys, but very safe looking places. They look very safe. They may be 14 or 15 coming and meeting up with somebody who's 14 or 15. Girls and boys can be victims and they eventually befriend you. It's more about manipulation and getting you one step closer, one step closer, one step closer until they get you to participate along with them in your own victimization. They begin to chain your mind, chain your heart. And then you're not going to run away because you love them, but you also greatly fear them. So how do you keep an eye out? How can you tell if someone in your life or your community is being trafficked? The Department of Homeland Security lists a number of behaviors that could indicate someone is being trafficked. Here's a look at some of the big ones. Just ask yourself, does the person appear disconnected from family, friends, community organizations, or houses of worship? Has a child stopped attending school for big chunks of time? Has the person had a sudden or dramatic change in behavior? Is the person fearful, timid, or submissive? Does the person show signs of having been denied food, water, sleep, or medical care? Do they appear to be coached on what to say or are they living in unsuitable conditions? And in terms of children specifically, Celia has two more points you may want to consider. Maybe um, a kid that has a new iPhone or a new bling on their wrist or something like that. And you know their whole family can't afford that. Maybe their whole outfit is worth $10, but they have a $200 bracelet. 
Where'd you get that? Who gave that to you? Maybe they're 14 and their boyfriend's 27. Why would a 27-year-old want to go out with a 14-year-old? These are all really scary things to think about. So to make sure that you know what's going on in your child's life, Celia suggests striking a balance between setting hard rules and being open to having conversations that are kind of difficult for everyone. But that is easier said than done. You have to start the conversation as a parent. Uh, you have to start that conversation about human trafficking. And it's it's none of these are the talk you know these are a series of talks it's a conversation those are things that regularly occur in your house that's the way you want to create it so you want to talk about things like sexually transmitted infections and hiv and rape and uh, sex trafficking and labor trafficking you want to you want to have a household that there is regular conversations about that because then you give kids permission to talk about that if you talk about that. And Celia said parents don't necessarily have to worry about the creepy guy under the bridge. The problem is we don't know what a trafficker looks like. Take two recent cases locally, for example. Just on Tuesday, 53-year-old father Michael Zacharias was arrested by the FBI in Finley. He's facing federal charges that include both sex trafficking of a minor and sex trafficking of an adult by force. And according to the complaint, investigators are aware that Zacharias has engaged in sexual conduct with minors since the late 90s. And just last week, the FBI arrested now former Elmore police officer Samuel Kerp on charges of receiving and distributing child pornography. Kerp allegedly exchanged a number of disturbing images through an app called Kick, while apparently using the police department's internet access. And again, neither of these two have been convicted just yet, but these are just two of the multiple stories that have happened locally in the past month alone. But I consider myself young and hip, and I honestly have no idea what the app Kick does or is. So how are parents supposed to stay in the know? The problem is Celia says, they really can't, but there still are ways that you can keep your kids safe. You know, if somebody has a friend online that I don't know about as a parent or somebody that the that you don't want to tell me about, then that's definitely going to be a red flag. Uh, where you set the computer up in your house, um, the hours that young people can be on the computer, who's in the room, who's not in the room when they're on the computer. All of those things are very important because again, you will not be able to outsmart. There are apps that are popping up and closing down all the time. As soon as you learn the latest app or the latest game or the latest website or whatever, it's gone and there's a new one. So you will never be able to keep up, um, you know, with what they're doing. It's all about relationship. So if you teach them to be cautiously optimistic, right, in yeah. real life, like this may be a great friend. It may not. Um, you don't want to talk to anybody online that you don't know. And I know, I just threw a lot of information at you, but if this has got you ready to jump in and make tangible change, there are a ton of ways that you can get started locally. And honestly, because of coronavirus, you can do that right from your own home. The Lucas County Human Trafficking Coalition is a great place to start. They meet through Zoom every third Wednesday of the month, and you can just hop right in. No need to sign up or anything. Celia says you can hang out for a few sessions and see if it's your jam and maybe where you fit in. Everyone has something to bring to the table, even if you aren't sure what that is just yet. There is a diversity of people in terms of their fields of practice, their professions. We have faith-based communities, survivors. So once you get involved, um, you may love it because we've had people who are moms, you know, and they say, well, I don't. I don't have any particular skill to bring to the coalition. Yes, you do. Everyone has talents they can bring. If your talent is talking to people on the phone or your talent, hey, I can be the secretary, I can type up stuff, or hey, I'm really good at presenting, or whatever it is, we can use that skill and that talent and we need you. They are constantly busy and right now are working to organize the International Human Trafficking and Social Justice Conference, which is usually held right here in our community. But of course this year it will be online as is everything now. Meaning you can tune right into that as well though. There will be over 70 presenters so you can learn more about the cause and how you can get involved. And that is right around the corner next month from September 23rd until September 25th. But 
that is all I have for you today. For more information on everything that we talked about, check out the link in the description of this video. It has a ton of very important resources for you if you do want to get involved. Plus, Celia Williamson is such a wealth of knowledge. I couldn't help but share the entire interview that we had. So if you really want to hear more from her, I'll send that video to you. It should be somewhere on your screen here. So check that out too. But with all of that, I hope you get out there, make informed decisions, and I will see you next time.